What's up everyone, Steven here with TechMaker.TV. In this episode, we're gonna keep going with looking at the Impressionist gem for tracking page views in our Rails 6 blog. This is part two. I think there's probably gonna be three or four parts of just looking at Impressionist. Um, in this part, we're essentially just gonna look around at uh, what we can actually query and how we can query it. Uh, I realized after the last episode that Everything that we looked at was really post specific, but if we want to do things like look at what are the top posts and um, you know page views across the entire blog every day, we're going to need a little bit more than just looking at individual posts. So I wanted to just kind of start exploring that here so you'll know where we're headed. In the next part, we're going to actually set up some of those more in-depth queries. And then in part four, as I have it outlined right now, we're actually going to build out an analytics page um, something kind of simple but interesting, probably using some kind of charting library like chart.js or Plotly or something like that. But with all of that said, we're going to go ahead and get started with a little bit of database exploration in this episode. And uh, hopefully that's interesting, but we need to kind of look at it a little bit before we actually start writing any queries. So let's go ahead and jump in. So the first thing I want to do, and I want this to sort of be, if you're kind of new to Rails or even maybe like somewhat intermediate with Rails, I want to show you a little bit of my process of how I actually learn things. Let's go over to our code editor and let's open up our schema. So oftentimes you'll have gems that install database tables and you know, you might not actually directly work with that database table. Um, but it's good to kind of look through here and see what's happening. And so you can see we've actually got several examples of that already. So we have our uh, act action text and active storage and uh, another active storage table. All these have their own tables that we've never directly worked with. Same thing for friendly ID. And here we go, we have this impressions table. And so we can look through here and see all of the attributes. So impressionable type. I don't know what that is, but I assume that's going to be something like a class name. So I would assume that's probably like post, and then here's like post ID. Um, then we have the user ID, which I'm not sure what that's about. Uh, we'll check that out in a second, because uh, we're not actually making this belong to a user or anything, but maybe that's got to do with some unique thing they generate. Um, obviously controller name and action name and view name all sort of makes sense. I'm interested in what the difference between action name and view name is. I guess like if you render a different view, uh, maybe that's something. Um, then we have the request hash, the IP address, session hash, so on and so forth. Um, but let's go look and see what we actually have stored in these fields for some of the existing uh, values that we generated yesterday. So if we just go to Rails S, no, sorry, Rails, let's clear that, Rails C for the Rails console. Let me zoom in a little bit here. I've lost where I was. Okay, here we go. So, sorry, I'm going to quit, clear, zoom in, clear again, Rails C. Now we're like back at the top of the screen. Okay, so what was the name of that table again? That was impressions. So we should have, do we have a, like a model called impression? Yeah, so you don't see this. I assume that was there because normally you would have a model that's singular that maps to the plural name of the table. Um, we didn't create an impression, so I'm assuming that's coming from the gem. So if we do impression.count, so we have six. So, you know, you could, let's take a look at impression.last. And just kind of see what's in here. So this is what I thought. So we have so the ID is an automatic database generated thing. That's not really relevant um, for what we're looking at here. We have the post. So this is the name of our class. We have an impressionable ID. So I'm going to assume that that means that this is for post find three, and that's the case. So what it's basically doing is it's storing the name of the class and then the ID of the thing that it looked up. So that way you could do something like, um, let's just kind of, I'm going to make this up as I go just a little bit here. So impression.last gives us that. And then we'll do dot m. Let's do impression equals that. And then we could do impression dot impressionable, it's a long word, impressionable type. 
and then we can do dot classify. Uh, no, what is it? Uh, constantize, and so now we can do dot constantize dot find, and then we can do impression dot impressionable ID, and so this query here impression dot impressionable type dot constantize constantize if you're newer to rails converts like a string into an actual class um, sometimes you'll see dot classify dot constantize I think like if we had post dot classify it's gonna put it in capital letters if we had like post something you can see that it basically puts it in this uh, type of camel casing for rails so that it knows to look for a class so sometimes you'll see dot classify dot constantize in any case this is turning into more of a meta programming discussion than uh, the actual impressionist stuff so let's get back to that so now that we know kind of how this works what we could do is we could say something like uh, impression dot where um, impressionable type is post and that's going to give us all the impressions for our post class. So I think I want to write a query. And I wonder if this exists already. Um, so one thing we can do, and I'm not going to go deep into this, but let's open up the impressionist, impressionist gym rails. Let's just look here and see in their code if they have anything that would help us. So sometimes the documentation can be a little lacking or maybe you just want to see how something works. So in that case, what you can do is go to like the gym. And again, like if you're more advanced with Rails, you might want to just go ahead and skip past this episode. But if you're like me when I was probably like a year or two into working with Rails, I was kind of intimidated by looking at like the under the hood at gyms. So what you want to do is go into the lib file, lib folder rather, You'll go normally just into like the folder name the same as the gym, impressionist here. And then we're going to see a lot of stuff that we've been working with. So we have our models, and there's going to be active record right here probably is where we want to go. And then we have impression.rb. And we can look here that we have impression, which uh, inherits from active record base, something with counter cache, setup association, new self set. I don't know what that means. That's kind of interesting. So I don't really see a lot going on here, and maybe that's not the right place to be looking. I'm not entirely sure. Impressionable, include, like there's a lot of indirection a lot of times when you're looking around with in, in these gems with include this, include that. We're gonna kind of click around until we just see something. I, there may not be anything to see here, to be totally honest. Um, I just wanted to see if they had any built-in queries that I was unaware of before we write all of our own because there might be a way to uh, kind of you know make this a little bit easier on, our, easier on ourselves but I'm not seeing anything I know we saw this setup association thing here define belongs to yeah I'm not seeing anything I don't really want to sit here and read this entire library I don't think so let's just kind of pop back over to the code or the terminal rather look at what we had written here so what I want to do is basically just uh, copy this and we're gonna go over to our post class and I'm going to write a new scope and I'm wondering if this is actually a scope here um, this is really more of just a query let's do um, Hmm, let's do a self, and then we'll say, um, let's paste this in here before we forget it, but what should we call this? So this is going to be a total, um, all, let's just call it impressions. Can we do that? Um, let's go back to our Rails terminal here. Um, we'll reload this and do post.impressions. Yeah, so I think that's pretty good. So if we do post dot, uh, what is it? Find three post equals underscore. So we already have a method called impressions on the actual post once we included that. And I'm wondering where that's defined. Um, the 
fine association has many impressions as impressionable dependent delete all so yeah so they're defining a method called impressions right here on the instance it looks like so uh, when we include this is impressionable we're getting this has many impressions thing um, but they don't have one on the class which is what we actually just defined so what we're gonna ultimately end up doing um, is saying something like you know impressions and then getting a date range so we're gonna have some kind of query like this um, it's probably gonna have some kind of more advanced stuff like we're gonna do some group by and whatever to get stuff that counts on particular days um, we need to be able to get unique versus total things like that probably gonna have to do some of that off-camera just to kind of work it out for myself here and it's gonna take a while um, to kind of map out exactly what I want to do um, but this is kind of a good starting point just to know that that's there um, one other thing that I'm gonna want to do is know like which ones have been viewed the most so I'll have to work out a query for that in any case um, I think this is pretty interesting. One comment that I have though from like a design perspective, we've added this self die impressions over here and typically, um, and again this is a, a style thing, but typically when you have a class method on like active record or something, it should return objects if you're doing some kind of query like on post, like so you say post dot something, like for instance we here we have post dot published what you expect to get back is instances of post and here we're calling impressions and we're getting back instances of this impression class I played around a little bit with trying to basically reopen the class and define some new queries and for some reason Rails doesn't like that I think it may have to do with the way that Rails uh, loads files um, which is curious so I'm gonna try one other thing here really quick and um, this isn't my favorite thing in the world I mean we may redo this um, but I want to have a way to create my own queries that returns something approximating what we expect and you'll see what I mean in a second so if we have like a model we'll call it page view rb and again this is gonna be slightly bizarre but it might be better than putting everything directly on post so so we could have something like page view inherits from impression and then instead of having self dot impressions here like this on page view what we could do I think let's see if this works so I want to have a, a scope actually so we'll say scope and let's say for type and then give it a type here so we'll just say type um, I'm messing up the syntax on this thing and then we'll just say where impression type is type let's go try this so let's reload say page view see if this gives us any issues um, syntax problem scope for type type do let me go check on post here published what did I do wrong um, oh I see shouldn't have def scope we should just have scope that will do it all right let's go reload one more time and try that out so we have page view and let's do page view dot count and then we'll do page view dot last and we get back that's interesting so you can see here this is actually giving us back a page view object but it's actually our impression so I don't love that because um, basically now we're, we're sort of over we're mixing things up that are sort of probably not great to mix up so like um, if we do post dot first dot impressions um, or post dot I think it's find three so now we're getting back impression objects so to make this consistent we might actually want to you know make this method return page views um, this is getting to be a little bit strange um, but in any case what I like is now we can do page view dot 
for type post. And this gives us a nice place to actually define our queries. I'm going to research this and see if there's a way that I can actually just override the impression class or like actually extend the behavior of it. Um, because I feel like I should be able to do that in Ruby, um, but maybe that's just, I don't know, I'll look into it. But in any case, this is better than probably putting it directly on post, in my opinion. Um, so this will give us a place where we can actually define scopes. So we're going to have some scopes in here, like we're going to have, um, let me make a little to-do list here so that I don't forget. So we'll have to-do, um, define scope for... Uh, counts for last seven days. We'll have one for unique counts. And then maybe we'll do like, and actually that should be or custom range like that. So That'll be good. What else do we want? Hmm. I, I don't know. I'll, I'll map this out later. But anyway, I just this will give us a place where we can define these scopes. So this is better, I think, than just popping it here. It also makes it where um, we can, you know, potentially create impressions for like the home page and stuff and then include those in here. Oh, I want to have one for uh, most popular pages. Scope for page ranks by count, and then maybe unique count as well by unique count. Anyway, so we're kind of lining up what we're going to do here. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and stop the episode here. I think this is a little bit strange of an episode. It's just kind of me exploring around. I felt like it could be useful on a Saturday to just spend some time kind of kicking the tires here and planning out what we're going to do next. So hopefully you found this interesting. Uh, this is kind of helpful stuff. I saw stuff like this when I was learning and it helped me a bit. So I thought I would do some of it here as well. It's a little less structured, but should be kind of interesting if you're into this sort of thing. So all of that said, thanks for watching and uh, I'll talk to you in the next episode.